Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 18, Chapter 3. Reminiscences of the Clowns, Part 6. If you haven't watched the previous video or chapter, you can find the link in the description below. Before we begin, this video contains light novel spoilers, if you do not want to be spoiled, do not watch it. And, if you will continue, an additional disclaimer notice. So without further ado, let's get to the video. The conceited Jahil, the great magician, seemed to have no end to his glory, but it did. His stupid attempt to turn the dragon empress Milam into a puppet, which angered her, was the cause of this. The capital of super magic, Soma, was destroyed overnight. No one knew if Jahil was still alive or dead. People thought he was dead because there was no way he could have lived through that flash of light. So Kigali thought more about the people she cared about than about the man who had died. The maids who had always taken care of her with kindness. The knights who followed her when she became a warrior. Her cherished people, who had a happy ending. She used the forbidden spell because she was worried about the people she loved. The forbidden spell was called, Dead Birthday. She already knew how it worked because she had been a test subject for it. The spell was perfected, resulting in the birth of Ter, Footman, and Clayman. Kigali gave all of them lovely and sweet names. And in the process, she found out something she didn't want to know. The dead elves that her spell made were not at all ugly. Only Kigali was intentionally made to be ugly. King Jahil, who hated his daughter, took away her beauty to make Kigali suffer. Even if she had known that, she couldn't do anything about it. A curse changed the way Kigali looked, and there was no way to change it back. But the children that Kigali had made wouldn't leave her alone. They, too, wore masks to hide who they really were, and they felt Kigali's pain. Kigali wasn't alone, and her hope that she would make it grew. Then, the elf tribes that had lived in different places joined the four of them. Let's start over and rebuild our own country. Then create a country where everyone can live happily ever after. Kigali made up her mind in secret to do it. But that would become a faint and short-lived hope. When the Chaos Dragon attacked, it made the land contaminated. So, everyone who loved Kigali was cursed and turned into a dark elf. At that time, Kigali also acted like she was cursed. Because Kigali and Tyr were undead elves, they were able to survive the curse. However, they knew who they were and were sad that they were different from everyone else. After that, Kigali and her friends left their home country and went somewhere else. They left together, even though they had some regrets. They moved around until they found a safe place to stay. When everyone's lives were back to normal, Kigali decided to go back to her home country. More than anything, she wanted to return to her home country and find the treasure she had left behind. Even though the city was gone, it still looked beautiful in her mind. She came to the conclusion that she needed to sever her regrets and turn them into food for the future. So, she left, and while she was traveling, she met a man. What, you? You could have helped me if you had been watching me, right? Don't be a fool. A person like me cannot compete with that catastrophic dragon. You are being too modest. From where I stand, you look like enough trouble. Ouch. His name was Sarian Grimwald, and he was the chosen hero who drove the Chaos Dragon out of this land. He was dying because he was in a fight to the death with the Chaos Dragon. Don't try too hard. Now, the healing magic. There's no point to it, so don't do it. My wounds won't heal because the Chaos Dragon's attacks are cursed. I had planned a few ways to get back on my feet, but this is how it is. I need you to tell someone something. I'm here to tell you that I beat Chaos Dragon and died in style, just like a chosen hero. Who is this chosen hero? Before you die, I have a proposal. Even though I do bad things, there is still a chance that you will live. You might forget things and end up like this, but are you willing to give it a shot? What's up with you, but you make a good point. Sylvia would kill me if I just died here. Given that, accepting this offer is the best thing that could possibly occur to me, are you sure? I am cursed. I'd rather do bad things than be persecuted. If you're the chosen hero, I'm ready to become a demon lord and protect everyone. Also, if I use this evil method, you'll become my puppet, right? I don't care, I don't care, but it's interesting. I'm a free man, and I won't be controlled easily. Also, a chosen hero and a demon lord are always connected in some way. So, that's how you and I met, right? You're an interesting guy, even though you're talking nonsense. Then I'll make you my puppet. The talks came to an end. Kigali thought that what Sarian said was a joke, but it was not. And as a result of this whim, Sarian became undead and lived. Curse Lord, Kazarium and Wonder Piero, Laplace were born at that time. Since then, many things have happened. Taking control of the territory. 
The war against humans and half-humans was very hard, but Kazarium was able to get through it and become Curse Lord. He was known as one of the Demon Lords, and his power grew steadily over time. He chose Carrion, the Beast Master, and Frey, the Sky Queen, as Demon Lords and made a strong alliance with them. The situation was good, so much so that he didn't even realize he'd stop trying. The next target for Kigali was a young man named Leon. The idea was to control Leon and teach him a lesson in humility after he declared himself a demon lord in the middle of nowhere. As soon as she saw him, Kigali started to feel jealous. Leon, this man who said he was a demon lord, was too gorgeous. Her demon father, the king, had made her look ugly. Her gender had been taken away from her, and she had been struggling to survive. The appearance of Leon, a man who was more beautiful than a woman, slowed Kigali's thinking, and she made the grave error of underestimating the strength of her foe. Leon's blow caused Kigali to lose her physical body, leaving her only with her spiritual body to travel the world. She should have vanished, it was a miracle that she didn't. She was angry, but she also wanted something. Therefore, Kigali clung to life. As the curse lord, she used what little power she still had to get ready for her own resurrection. Then, in a daze, she tried to summon one last time, but she didn't realize it and didn't take over. Her plan fell through, and she gained nothing. The rest of it was wiped out. Help me, save me, I don't want to be parted from you. I just want to be happy with my friends, but why am I the only one who feels this way? She complained about her bad luck and asked for help, but no one responded. Kigali wasn't by herself, but nobody came to help her. It was a difficult journey. Ideals were a long way off, and Kigali was in charge. She couldn't complain, and she had to always look ahead. So Kigali had stopped hoping that she would be saved. She could only count on herself and her closest friends. She had always lived this way. However, Yuki Kagurazaka, the boy, okay, then. You look tired, so rest for now inside me. After Kigali attempted to kill himself and was never saved, Yuki Kagurazaka reached out to him. After a few years, the next few years, Kigali slept inside Yuki and talked to him and gave him advice. Kigali, who had been living inside Yuki, had finally assumed a homunculus body. In keeping with his word, Yuki. Moreover, this is my original form. Kigali was so happy about Yuki's kindness that she wanted to cry, but she kept her cool. She tried to keep her manly voice, but Laplace told her to stop. He was acting like he was making fun of Kigali, but he really cared about her. Thanks for everything, boss. Kigali thanked him very much. Kigali could look forward to tasty meals and desserts now that she had a body. The cream puffs were particularly tasty. Having a good time and laughing with friends. They were so happy, but that happiness didn't last for very long. Clayman was no longer alive. With the death of another close friend, Kigali and the others once again came to understand. For their own happiness, they have to take over the whole world. To take over this world and run it the right way. Clayman is stupid, arrogant, and cute. I'm sorry that happened to you. Rest now and keep an eye out for us. We will make what we want happen. Kigali and the others weren't on the side of right, but they weren't bad either. They were average, so, they should be able to make a world where everyone can live happily. They continued to do what they were doing because they believed this. They beat Mariabel, but Demon Lord Rimuru found out, so they ran away to the Empire, where Lieutenant Kondu took over. Yuki was also taken control of. Even though Kigali's heart was about to break, she couldn't give up at this point. I promise that I won't betray you, and I will accept your dominion. The terms of a contract must be met, and any benefits received must be given back. So Kigali was ready to do whatever it took. Kigali awakens as a result, she was stronger and more attractive than when he was Demon Lord Kazarium and had the body of a frail homunculus. When Kigali finally woke up, Feldway and the others had Velzard back with them. Michael planned to take the Dragon Factor from Velzard to help him evolve further, but before he did that, he used Army of Angels, Armageddon, to implant it in Kigali and the others. The seven seraphim were successfully summoned. Naturally, Kigali was selected as one of them. As their great powers fought inside them, their bodies were reborn. And so it was that five months had passed since Kigali had arrived at the Heavenly Star Palace.